saying that the recent advances in the neuroscience is going to open a new era in understanding the brain, the mind, our personality and attitude and specifically when we say that the structure and the function of the cells in the brain can bring about a tremendous change. I belong to the East and West End, and the masters and the teachers of the East and West End has only one aim, that is knowledge. So not only the knowledge of the objective world, but also the subjective. And the science miserably fails by not accepting that there is a subjective reality behind the objective reality that is constantly changing. Let me put it in a simple way. The science aims at a discovery of the material world and that is objective. But the Eastern wisdom of which the mindfulness is an integral part aims at discovery of the subjective reality. You can name anything that subjective reality. You can name it real self or the self or the purest state of the consciousness or the highest state of the consciousness or simply saying nothingness. So when you say nothingness, you are saying explaining that state of the nothingness with reference to the mind. Because in the state of the mindfulness, there is no content. But that is simply a definition. We are not actually knowing what is that subjective reality. So meditation or mindfulness is a journey to discover that subjective reality. And the science studies, no doubt, we cannot bring that subjective reality into the mind. There the science becomes totally helpless. Uh, my master used to give an example that you can see the reflection of the moon in a water. But that is not the moon. When the waves in the ocean starts, the moon is distorted. But that moon is an image. But the real moon is in the sky. The same way that self that we discover in the mindfulness state is much higher and above than the mind. It reflects into the mind when the mind is transparent. When we empty the mind of its contents, when the so-called nothingness is achieved. But what the mind perceives, that subjective reality is nothing but an image. So the problem with the science is that what the great masters used to say that the death of the mind is what the mindfulness is. But fundamental question remains unanswered. The science studies it proves that mindfulness helps in changing the brain. It changes the attitude, behavior, and personality. The famous phrase, 
fire the brain to rewire it. They all agree that there is an inner peace and calmness and happiness that are common results of mindfulness practices. Almost more than 300 studies shows in one way or the other. The science also claims that it is a effortless and natural practice. So if I say natural practice, I say it is a non-practice. They also agree it is effortless. Now, if inner peace and happiness are our experiences in the state of mindfulness without doing anything, it means it does not follow the law of cause and effect that is observed and understood by the science and by the mind. So that also proves that the inner peace and the happiness lies within all of us. It is potential in us. And they are our essential nature. If that is potential in us, Eastern wisdom says they are our essential nature. So now that essential nature is what the great master says, the subjective reality. Oh, you can name anything, non-self, or real self, or nothingness, uh, anatma. You know, we have different uh, words for it. There were many masters before Buddha who said, the death of the mind is the mindfulness state. So now we have to start with idea, with a single idea. I'm not asking the scientific community to start believing that, oh, it is a real self. But they have to start with an assumption, with an idea that peace and happiness are our essential nature. Why? Because we don't practice mindfulness. It is an effortless and natural practice it lies beyond the cause and effect, then meditation becomes natural and effortless. Otherwise, one part of the mind and the intellect will continue to claim that peace and happiness are created and produced by the practice of mindfulness. And if it is produced, then nothing remains effortless at all. So that is very important to uh, pick up and understand. Then comes the second question that uh, one scientist explains, it is the inward moving of awareness and attention fires the brain to rewire it, and then we bring about the different changes in our behavior and attitude. It leads to the peace and happiness. I agree with it. But the question remains, what the mind is doing with that inward attention and awareness? It is looking at the subjective reality and that subjective reality is of the nature of peace and happiness and wisdom and the truth and the knowledge. So what is required in our mindfulness programs and courses is to educate these practitioners rightly based on the philosophy of Eastern wisdom that there is an entity, there is a state, you may say it is nothingness, you may say it is a self, as the Buddha says, as other masters says, uh, let there be a death of the mind and everything will happen. Two things, the first thing that we should educate the practitioner that we are going beyond the mind. That is why it is effortless. And the second thing, that there should be an intent, an inspiration, that we are 
on the path to discover that peace and happiness within. That is not the product of the mind. Then only the mindfulness will succeed. Otherwise, we start giving the practices. There are hundreds of the practices. And uh, then there are different schools. We will never be able to bring them together. And the simple reason that we don't follow the principles laid down by the great teachers. A person, <clears throat> a person is hyperactive. He doesn't want to, he doesn't understand the language of effortlessness. So his body, his mind, his emotions, the contents in the mind will continue to be there during the practice of mindfulness. So one master says, okay, let us do a couple of those practices which helps us to calm down the body and then we will take the mind with it. So mindfulness practice remains the same. And in other cases, uh, you, we are stressed and uh, we are feeling miserable. And I ask you to close your eyes and move your awareness and attention inside. It goes inside. Mind changes the direction from outside to inside. It decreases the objective content. You are bound to feel relaxed. But that doesn't mean that it is also a mindfulness. And that's all for today. We'll continue our journey. Oh, mm -hmm.